guys gotta understand the culture of the people. You know, they they frustrated and they scared. I think you've had too much to drink to be driving. Hands off the taser! Hands off the taser! The police don't know how to treat us. Look at a white girl trying to burn down a Wendy's. This wasn't us. This wasn't us. We're not fighting to be resistance, rebellious. We are fighting because we fear our life. People haven't felt heard in this city for a very long time. Atlanta 9 1 up for the 7729. What's location, Merchant? Uh, 125 University. Okay, 125 University Southwest. Is it at the Wendy's? Uh, yes, ma'am. All right, you need police, fire, ambulance out here. Um, the police. Okay, tell me what's going on. Um, I have a car. I think he's intoxicated. He's in the middle of my drive through I tried to wake him up. But he's, he's parked dead in the middle of the okay. drive through so I don't know what's wrong with him. Is he breathing now? Do you know? Yeah, he woke up, looked at me, and I was like, you got to move out of the drive through because people can't. They're going around him. He's in the middle of the... Just right All there. Right. Tell me what kind of car he's So they're trying to go around him. What's the and color? And I'm to pull over. You know, if he not had too much to drink to pull over and go to sleep, he said he went, they said he went right back out and walked in. What kind of car is it? It's a white car. He just sitting there. You can't miss him. He won't is he black? <laughs> is he black? Why is he taking care Yeah. Is he black? Okay, in a white sedan in the middle of the drive thru No, let me see what kind of car. It's right here. I, yeah, he, he's right here. The car's going around him. Okay. All right. Does he appear to have any weapons, ma'am? Ma'am? Does he appear to have any weapons from where where you can see him? No, no. I think he's intoxicated. All right. All right. Give me your name and call back number. All right. And Miss give me your telephone number and call back number. Uh, the store number 5263. All right. Thank you so much. We'll get someone out there. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. The GBI confirms his name is Rayshard Brooks. He is 27 years old. So breaking news out of Southwest Atlanta. We have just learned a man shot by Atlanta police after an intense struggle over that officer's taser has died. The size of the crowd has changed throughout the day. If you look behind me, you can see the protesters who are here now. They were here within minutes of those shots being fired last night. They tell us Brooks was a husband, a father who was simply coming to get something to eat and did not deserve to die at the hands of police. We understand their passion. And so ultimately uh, we have to work together and ensure that we work with the community to ensure that they understand what's going on and we understand their concerns and to address them and work together with them. You hear running from somebody does not have the intentions of hurting nobody. That man was running from him. He was in fear for his life. He didn't want to hurt that officer. He should not have been shot three times. He deserved to be here right now. I don't want to hear about your fear for your life. He took a taser. You can go to Walmart and Target. Juveniles can buy tasers. That wasn't a deadly weapon. That man did not want to hurt that police officer. He was trying to get away. He should not have been shot three times. And this message to Keisha Lance Bottoms. You do not win your election by a landslide. I think you won about 700 plus votes. If you don't arrest the officer by Monday, you will be voted out. You will be voted out. And Powell Howard, you didn't win your election Tuesday. You're up for a spinoff. Indict the officer. If you want to calm the city, indict the officer. Keisha Lance Bottom, two weeks ago, you arrested six black officers. We need to have the same energy and arrest the white one, too. Period. This is a it's not that simple. It's not that, it's not, it's that easy. All this stuff that's going on now, when the police, when the police is We are tired. It just makes sense to just We are so aggressive to make We are friends. so tired. Last night, that could have been avoided just by waking him up and telling him to go home. Maybe just tell him when this a man is sleeping in his car, he's drunk. He don't have the so ill will to, to hurt no officer. So he's in his car. Right now. Whether he's drunk or not, he don't want to hurt no officer. He's in his car right drunk. Don't tell me it was, you had to take his damn life. Now you got three kids without a damn father. You know how hurt hurt now? You know how hurtful that shit feels as a black man? Kids growing up without fathers. Y'all don't know the pain that we all are out here. This shit has been happening for decades. Kids going over there, Father. Y'all make fun of us. White people, I'm not racist, but y'all make fun of us. And, and those are uh, uh, two protesters here. there at the scene purple, uh, near she where the officer involved, involved shooting happened officer. yesterday he around 10 30 p.m. Uh, of course, emotions are raw. Uh, this was a, a father of. Before we even get into what happened last night, the one thing that nobody can disagree with is that it shouldn't have happened.
There are about 200 protesters right here at the corner. It's been very peaceful. There are protests scheduled throughout today. The largest one expected to happen tonight at 8 o'clock. say what makes this protest a little bit different than some of the other ones is that I've seen a lot of tears today. A lot of people hugging each other and consoling each other. At one point, it seemed as if the entire Brooks family was crying and supporters and protesters just went to hug them. That was a very emotional moment and we haven't seen that level of emotion at some of the protests so far. The chief of the Atlanta Police Department is out less than 24 hours after a deadly police shooting. Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms has accepted the resignation of Chief Erica Shields. Chief Shields has offered to immediately step aside as police chief so that the city may move forward with urgency in rebuilding the trust so desperately needed throughout our communities. Uh, you have one that looks from the video that he has his own taser out and it seems like he's trying to tase Mr. Brooks, but then Mr. Brooks turns. It looks like he attempts to fire the taser that he has. Uh, and then he is shot by police. Criminal defense attorney T. Greg Doucette says it's unclear by simply looking at this video whether Brooks was shot before or after he turned his body towards the officers. Sometimes the force of getting shot with a bullet will cause the body to turn. Also unclear from the video is which officer shoots Brooks. It's difficult to tell without you know, better sound and, and closer video or body camera footage. Doucette says there is debate as to whether the officer's actions were an appropriate use of deadly force. If it's something where he shot after he turns and tries to fire the taser, what the courts will say is that's probably a justified use of force. We're not going to second guess what the police decided in that split second decision. While there may be debate as to whether this was an appropriate use of deadly force, I firmly believe that there is a clear distinction between what you can do and what you should do. I do not believe that this was a justified use of deadly force and have called for the immediate termination of the officer. I think that Mayor Keisha Bottom, Lance Bottom, may have acted precipitously in terminating one officer and putting another officer on leave before the investigation was completed. What happens in these situations normally is that there is an investigation. The officers are normally put on administrative leave and the Georgia Bureau of Investigations that's conducting this investigation would issue a report and then the mayor would act. But it's my understanding that the mayor of, of Atlanta is on a short list to be the running mate as the vice president uh, for the Biden uh, uh, committee. And so therefore, I'm deeply concerned. But I think what our viewers must understand is that a police officer can use deadly force when there's a fleeing felon. And if that police officer believed that his life or the life of others are in danger, he can use a deadly yeah. force. But you know, Ted, you and I were in full disclosure texting a lot last night because remember the call came for an individual sleeping in his car in a drive through And then even though uh, Brooks appears to turn the gun, which is a taser and fire at him, there's space, they're giving chase now different than perhaps the force that would have been used had they still been wrestling. Uh, so as you and I have over these years have gone in and looked at the use of force, was it appropriate or? You know, with all due respect, uh, it's time for the city council and the mayor to stop posturing and playing with the people. We saw the videotape of what happened to those students. We saw the videotape of what happened last night. Now, the other officer seen in the video, he has been placed on administrative duty. Well, it does appear in the video that he is fleeing from the Atlanta police officers, that as he's fleeing, he turns back over his shoulder with what appears to the naked eye to be this taser that uh, a witness has told us they saw uh, the individual have that belonged to one of the officers. And as he turned it over, you'll be able to see on the video the Atlanta officer 
literally reach down to get his uh, service weapon. And as, as uh, he gets his weapon, uh, Mr. Brooks begins turning his body away from him, I presume, to flee. And it looks like that's when the discharge go of the weapon goes off then. So there are blue lights on the left side of the screen. Uh, you will see a man run to the right with two police officers chasing him. It appears that the fleeing man turns. Uh, you even see a small flash that may or may not be the taser firing. And then it ends very quickly uh, with the man mortally wounded from a police gunshot. When the shooting happened around 1030, protesters were here within minutes and have been here ever since. At one point, protesters took to the streets in both directions, blocking traffic, forcing APD to cut off streets leading to the Wendy's. Rapper T.I. is here with Rayshard's cousin. No, I, I watched this on the internet. I, from the whole George Floyd situation to us coming together like we're doing something. And this whole thing landed on my doorstep with my little cousin. I seen the video. I just think for me, the most hurtful thing for me is to watch the video, wake up and watch that video. And I got two little boys. They see the same video. That's their cousin. This, that's what hurt so much. I just, I thought Atlanta was higher than that. I thought we was bigger than that. I just want to make enough noise that they investigate this situation. That's all I want. Investigate the situation. Don't let Rayshard die in vain like that. We don't watch two, this happen so many years, but the young black boys around the country just dying in vain. The video will be digitally enhanced and then turn over as part of an investigative package uh, to the Fulton County District Attorney. We, we have to act now. I understand the mayor has a task force she's put together, but she, we either need to get an executive order addressing excessive force immediately, or city council needs to move forward with passing immediate legislation around excessive force. Another police-involved shooting in this city, and we've said it before and we'll say it again, Atlanta has a police brutality problem. It didn't start with our dear brother, Mr. Brooks. It goes back all the way back to Katherine Johnson, all the way back to Corey Ward. And the city has to address this, that Mr. Brooks should be the last one in Atlanta. If the mayor is serious about dealing with this, she needs to speak to this family and she needs to make sure that we have concrete policy changes that reflect the needs of this city. A show of force is not necessary right now to keep the peace. They believe they want to give these people all the room possible to exercise their First Amendment rights. That's but how do y'all expect us to keep on being peaceful when we keep being murdered, unjustified? Are you going to let me just spell my will? It was already so much stuff happening that I just reacted immediately and tried to de-escalate the crowd that was out there that was really upset. I mean, they were furious. The force running away from the police officer. He don't have a gun. Is there any reason? For them to shoot him. No. no. I'm not saying that, man. I'm not doing that. Rayshard Brooks. That's my name, and that should be every black man named here in our city. I don't know how to do this because I never knew I was going to have to do this. I, I watched this on the internet. I, from the whole George Floyd situation to us coming together like we're doing something. And this whole thing landed on my doorstep with my little cousin. I seen the video. I just think for me, the most hurtful thing for me is to watch the video, wake up and watch that video. I got two little boys. They see the same video. That's their cousin. This, that's what hurt so much. I just, I thought Atlanta was higher than that. I thought it was bigger than that. I just want to make enough noise that they investigate this situation. That's all I want. Investigate the situation. Don't let Rayshard die in vain like that. We don't watch two, this happen so many years with the young black boys around the country just dying in vain. I just don't want that to continue to keep happening like that. I don't know what else to say. I just want to feel like we got hope in this city. I'm much older than Rayshard. You'll think at this point it'll be over. It seems like this, it, it ain't gonna never stop, man. I don't want this on my doorstep like this, man. I'd rather be behind that computer watching. I ain't think it's gonna hit right here, man. I thought this city was better than that.
that something systemically wrong in this department. They got to an answer. Somebody need to say something. Somebody need to let, at least let the family know something. We need to at least know that the city is with us. Just don't hide this. Just don't leave it buried. Just don't let my little cousin die in vain. That's all. We just don't want him to die in vain. That's it. We, we really don't have much to say. We just want everybody to know that he have family. He have family. This ain't just a little boy just died in the street. He have family. This is brothers and sisters, his big cousin. He got family. We hate that it happened. We done cried already. We don't know what to do. We'll figure it out. We just want to know that it's hope in this city. We want to feel like this city is just like any other city. Have to talk to your family. Mm -hmm. to talk to your no, ain't nobody talked to us yet. I don't want to do. I don't want to do too much talking. We got. We getting lawyers. We're gonna do. We're gonna do this like it's supposed to be done. Just, just know that they need to know that. We just not finna die like this. We finna get these lawyers together about this, and we are gonna investigate this story. One thing I want y'all to do know about Ray Shaw. I know this is a guy that left this city to get himself together and came back to this city with himself together with his wife and his kids, and y'all just took him away from his wife and took him away from his kids. He went out here breaking no crime. That boy went to get something to eat and fell asleep up there. Y'all know what happened in the videos out there. We're gonna get these lawyers on this situation. Y'all better know that. The protesters have been coming and going all afternoon. Right now, there are a few protesters here, people wearing Black Lives Matters t-shirts and holding signs and really getting ready for the big crowds of protesters to return from uh, marching around downtown Atlanta, which is uh, uh, what they've been doing throughout the day. Never seen anything quite like this. I have never seen uh, black and white. I, what we're seeing now is very unique in the history of the city, and I think in the history of movements in general, where those who had the least, uh, and have been least impacted, are the ones making the most noise. When our white brothers and sisters are saying, look, black lives do matter, we get it now. got to make a change in the leadership wholesale, not just Chief uh, Shields, but that has got to be a radical reformation of how we police in this city, or this city is going to go up in smoke. An overview of what we are all seeing right now, and what we are seeing are three fires in front of the Wendy's on University Avenue, two to the right, one to the left. Atlanta Fire has been unable to get in there with their trucks. Protesters continue to ring that Wendy's at this point. Atlanta police presence has not been seen that according to our uh, reporters that are on the ground right now. We have also seen Atlanta police arrive in MARTA buses in riot gear, and they continue to assemble in mass in front of the protesters. As Doug Richards told us about 30 minutes ago, those who are organizing the protests had asked the white protesters to come to the front of the line and the African-Americans would be behind them. So there is some organization of these protesters right now. We're not entirely sure who. We are now seeing another fire. So we're counting one, two, three, four fires. Atlanta said it went wrong from the moment of when they didn't allow him. He offered to, to walk home. Uh, there was no need for an arrest, and it just shows the, uh, uh, the, the, the tendency toward incarcerating men of color, men and women of color, not only in Atlanta and Georgia, but across America. And all of this happening within the last 24 hours, 
uh, at 10.33 p.m. yesterday. This is when all of this, specifically to this uh, officer-involved shooting, the 48th officer-involved shooting that the GBI has had to investigate since January 1st, 2020. It showed horrible judgment on the part of both police officers. They huddled up. Uh, they didn't have to. And, and I don't know what went through Mr. Brooks' mind, but we know that it costs to be for uh, encounter with law enforcement. He, uh, arrested, bond, away from home, uh, perhaps lose his job, uh, uh, hire a lawyer. It was just so many things I, that might have gone through his mind, and, uh, but, but it, should, it could have been avoided. The incident that started it all was at the Wendy's location on University Avenue. Uh, this is near the downtown connector at University Avenue. A 27-year-old Rayshard Brooks was asleep in his vehicle outside the Wendy's at the drive through Witnesses called uh, uh, for the officers to come to the scene and somehow the situation ended up being a deadly police shooting. The Wendy's now, the fire has broken through the roof of that building. Fire Sergeant a while ago who told us that because of the safety of um, the firefighters that they were having trouble getting close to the building and so now we've seen the fire move from the drive through window in the dining area and now has broken through the roof there as the Wendy's is going up and it's going up in flames. It would uh, appear that Atlanta fire will not be going in there to put this out, that there had initially been some concern as Sergeant Cortez Stafford from Atlanta Fire had told us that, you know, if they could get their trucks in there safely uh, with an escort of Atlanta police, they would hope to be able to put it out. But at this point, uh, we don't see any sign that Atlanta Fire will be going in there at least anytime soon. This, this Saturday night in Atlanta, on the heels of weeks of unrest, demonstrators gathering overnight in Atlanta over the fatal shooting of 27-year-old Rayshard Brooks. Police deploying tear gas as demonstrators shut down a highway and even setting this Wendy's, the site of the incident, on fire. Officers fired three gunshots. Brooks's family outraged by the video. He wasn't out here committing crimes. He wasn't out here burglarizing, robbing somebody. He wasn't doing all that. That what hurts us more too is the fact that we know this. So was his life worth taking? The firing officer, Garrett Rolfe, was terminated overnight. The other officer, Devin Bronson, placed on administrative duty. This as Atlanta's mayor announced the resignation of police chief Eric Shields. Shields saying in a statement, it's time for the city to move forward and build trust between law enforcement and the communities they serve. The Georgia NAACP says Atlanta's police chief resigning is just one step forward. It's so important now because people are dying now. We don't have the luxury of waiting leading to protests last night with the Wendy's vandalized and set ablaze. The building gutted. Now this is a live look at the protesters at the Wendy's right now where they are calling for changes to police policies and laws in our state. Learning more about the former officer Rolf, he had been with the department for about seven years. Last year, APD honored him for making 50 to 99 DUI arrests the previous year. His post file showing that he had just undergone cultural and the use of force and de-escalation training in April, breathalyzer and firearms training in March, and deadly use of force training in January of this year. Up a GoFundMe page, it has already raised about $36,000. Rayshard Brooks leaves behind his wife, Tamika Miller, and four children, ages one to 13. The attorneys say the money will go directly to his family. Joined in the protest was Councilmember Antonio Brown. He says tomorrow he plans to introduce legislation that will prohibit the use of rubber bullets, flash bombs, and tear gas. I want a chief that knows the importance that you and I know each other, that we can communicate, that you know where I'm from, you know my struggles. So when you meet me and something happens where I'm intoxicated at a Wendy's, instead of you killing me, you're going to say, oh, bro, let me get you an Uber. 
or hey, even if you ran away, run away. I have a car. I'll eventually catch up to you once you sober down a little bit. And then, you know, what happened yesterday was unnecessary. Councilman Brown also plans to introduce some legislation that supports painting a, a city road with Black Lives Matter, but he wants citizens to decide where that will be located. I'm only out here picking up trash because I feel like that's necessary to do because I live here. Marina Grant was the first person we spotted picking up pieces of trash. As far as Mr. Brooks, he need a clean protest. He deserved it. A restaurant where we can eat. That, that, get, that gives us a decent deal, you know. I come to this Wendy's all the time, so now we got black folks who don't have a job this morning. A building can rebuilt, be rebuilt. A black life is never coming back. Rayshard Brooks, his children will continue to grow up for the rest of their life without a father. For some in the community, Brooks's death brings attention to a bigger issue, treatment by law enforcement. Anytime an officer approach us, we're going to fight back because we're not fighting to be resistant, rebellious. You know, we are fighting because we fear our life. Now, I know we do a lot of talking about what separates us. I know we do a lot of talking about how far we have to go, but let's talk about what we've done. Let's talk about what we've done in such a short period of time. We have forced them to acknowledge the pain that has existed for years and years. We have forced them to take into account and consider what we've gone through ever since they brought us to this country. We have forced them to now be considerate of our, our lives, our liberties, and we can't let up off the gas. Now, I have a phrase, it's us or else. But I want to explain to you what that or else means. I'm going to just tell you, I care, that's why I'm here. I'm not a politician. I don't run no office. I don't do none of the stuff that politicians do. I care, that's why I'm here. That's why I was at that press conference. That's why Killer Mike was at that press conference. Because we care. This is about us, and I feel like us together, united, yes, yes, is better than the strongest of us, yes, separated yes, and apart. That's right. A raging fire lit up the night sky as someone set fire to the Wendy's where Richard Brooks was shot. Soon after, these videos started popping up on social media. Look at a white girl trying to burn down the Wendy's. Appearing to show a Caucasian woman putting some kind of accelerant through the window. Many saying she wasn't even with the protest. This wasn't us. This wasn't us. It sparked outrage and finger pointing as the videos went viral. This one now viewed more than 1.6 million times. As soon as we saw these videos pop up, we started to investigate and got to work to verify. Late Sunday afternoon, Atlanta police confirmed they believe this woman set the fire, wearing all black and covering nearly everything except her eyes. APD sent out these pictures and posted a link to this, saying a video of the woman was posted on social media. Now they're offering thousands to find out who she Atlanta is. Atlanta Fire Rescue confirmed. You don't always have to call the police on everything that goes down. The man was asleep. He wasn't causing no trouble. Hell, get out on the parking lot and take the orders. Do anything. Call the medic if somebody's sick. Sleep. He could have had a, a, a diabetic attack. Anything could have happened. If you're born right down here and you're an African-American child, you have a 4% chance of ever rising up out of poverty. That's because there truly is no opportunity in our country the way it's set up right now, especially if you're African-American. And we have now learned that 36 protesters were arrested after going onto the interstate, 75, 85, and blocking traffic on the downtown connector last night. It, it shut down traffic for about an hour in both directions. It began at three lanes, went to seven, then 14. We're told of those arrests, four people were from out of state, 17 were from other cities across Georgia, and 15 had Atlanta addresses. Their names and charges have not been released as of this hour. The Atlanta, Georgia, a city that's on fire externally and internally, 
We just saw two uh, state patrolmen try to tell them to move out of the roadway or, or else they'll be shutting down this protest. Uh, they've been able to convince the officers that they are observing a moment of silence and that they'll soon move out of the way. So it seems like the state patrol has left them alone for just a little bit. So right now they're just quietly kneeling and raising their fists and protesting um, police brutality and also calling for uh, people to support black owned businesses. Tonight, anger and frustration in Atlanta. Crowds gathering outside the fire gutted Wendy's where 27 year old Rayshard Brooks was shot and killed by police during an attempted arrest. Isaac Lee, one of hundreds who came to pay respects. You've had a chance to kind of walk around and see the site. When you come here and you see the site firsthand, what do you feel? Uh, sadness, disparity. Um, I'm afraid. You're afraid? I'm afraid because I'm afraid that this is not going to be the last time that this is going to happen. This eyewitness video shows a struggle between Brooks and the police officers. The father of four grabs a taser, runs away, and shoots towards police, who then returned with fatal gunfire. It's just a legitimate fight. Uh, it's a legitimate use of force. Steve Gaynor with Georgia's police union stands by the officer's actions, stressing the encounter changed when Brooks turned and fired the taser. Someone's running away. Is it okay to fatally shoot them? Only if they they attack you. Uh, he attacked the officer with the taser. And he then, fires at the officer with the taser. And took off. That's all in an instant. Within 24 hours, Atlanta's police chief stepped down. The officer who shot Brooks was fired, and the other officer involved placed on administrative duty. There is no way from watching that videotape that that officer's life was in immediate danger um, from a non-lethal weapon um, being pointed backwards. Attorney Chris Stewart represents the Brooks family and says police mentality has to change. Brooks' wife, Tamika, devastated by the loss of her husband, had to break the news to their daughter. I let my daughter know that her father was not coming. Uh, she said, what do you mean my father's not coming? And I said, well, he's not, he, he's not here anymore. The mama, no, he's here. You stop playing. He'll be here to get me. Meanwhile, massive protests for the third weekend took place across the country as thousands asked for police reform and accountability. Here in Atlanta, hundreds gathering tonight in support of Rayshard Brooks. And they understand the pain. And even though I'm unable right now to protest by them out there doing it, makes me feel amazing. Because if I had the strength to do it, I would be there myself. Morgan joins us now from Atlanta. Morgan, what do we know about whether the district attorney will file charges against the officer? Yeah, Kate, he did speak out to say and says he does anticipate filing either manslaughter or murder charges, not saying exactly when, but saying to expect them sometime within the next week. TA also made an appearance at the Wendy's where 27 year old Richard Brooks was killed. He said there needs to be unity to promote real change. We have to put our egos to the side. What I care about is the people, humanity. How are we getting to the, the, the grunt of what these injustices are, these systemic measures that have been intentionally constructed within our society to keep black and brown communities oppressed? How are we working towards city and statewide solutions? Protesters shut down an entire interstate and set fires at and near the Wendy's restaurant where Brooks was killed Friday night. Earlier, police used tear gas and a flashbang to try to clear the area. Protests grew in Atlanta last night over a deadly police shooting. As a solution, Brooks offers to leave his car behind and walk to his sister's home. I can just go home. I have my daughters there right now. My three, my daughter's birthday was yesterday. Actually, just a little bit ago, things got a little tense. There was someone on the other side of the building who was starting to shoot a music video. Some people got really angered and upset about that. Why not talk to him as a human being and say, hey, buddy, maybe you had too much to drink. Leave your car here. Take Uber. I've seen it happen before, but that didn't happen. Instead, they got physical. Um, he ran. He did have the taser, but according to law, a taser is not a lethal weapon. 
So he didn't have a lethal weapon in his hand. He was running with the taser and then they shot him. It's just, it didn't need to happen. We need to change the culture of policing. We need to evaluate how we train police. Uh, we need to uh, uh, make sure police not only uh, support the communities that they are, are, they have a duty to protect and serve, but in many cases, they need to be in the community that they have a duty to protect and serve. CNN has been granted exclusive access to an interview that Brooks gave back in February, where he discusses feeling trapped by the criminal justice system. Probation is not there with you every day, like a mentor or something. They're not taking you out to find a job. You have to do these things on your own, you know, and I feel like it should be a way for you to have some kind of person, like a mentor assigned to you to, you know, keep your track, keep you in the direction you need to be going. We can't give the time back what we can make up for it, you know, so I'm trying, you know, I'm not the type of person to give up. You know, and I'm going to keep going until I make it to where I want to be. Joining us now is CNN political commentator Van Jones. Van, great to have you and great to have you share with us that video that gives us insight into how he was feeling and maybe why he responded the way he did when he realized he was being arrested. What do you see there in what Richard is talking about? Well, it's just heartbreaking. Um, what, what I see is, is a young man, like so many uh, young guys that I know, uh, he made a, a dumb mistake, a credit card fraud thing, he winds up on probation, and then he's, he's stuck in this quickstand uh, of, of, uh, of the probation system where literally any little thing you do wrong, you know, you wind up back in prison. I mean, you know, that, that interaction with the police, he was drunk in public, shouldn't be drunk in public. He knew he was going to go back to prison for that. So this is not just a police story. This is a probation story. Uh, we may not, we may never know exactly why the police chose to shoot a man in the back and then kick him. Well, hopefully we'll learn that at trial. But we do know why he ran in the first place. He ran because he's trapped in the probation system that's so punitive, so unforgiving. It's a spider's web of catch-22s. It's almost impossible to stay out of prison once you're on probation. Any little thing sends you back. He was running because he didn't want to lose his liberty. The wife of Richard Brooks is calling for those protesting her husband's death to remain peaceful. He was a sacrifice for people to see that black lives matter. And I hate that it was my husband whose life was sacrificed. But we have to stand up for our people. For a third straight day, crowds take to the streets of Atlanta. This demonstration, called a march for justice, ended up at the state capitol. To arrest him, a struggle begins. Brooks manages to get a hold of one of the officer's tasers and runs. What happens next is seen via surveillance video. Officer Garrett Rolfe gives chase, transfers his taser to his left hand, and reaches for his gun. Brooks turns back towards the officer, pointing the taser, firing it. Officer Rolfe drops his taser, draws his gun, and fires three shots. An autopsy report reveals Brooks is shot two times in the back and rules his death a homicide. In an interview with CNN, Tamika Miller said their daughter will always associate her birthday with her father's death. And she'll forever remember this birthday as the day that my daddy was killed, the day that my daddy was murdered. Not just the day that my daddy died or passed away, because he didn't just die of natural causes or pass away. This is the day that he was murdered. <laughs> Protesters took to the streets. Saturday, they blocked the main highway through downtown, shutting off traffic. Police in riot gear moved in to make arrests. Then at the Wendy's, where the shooting occurred, demonstrators began breaking windows. Fires broke out on the property before someone torched the inside. Police are searching for a suspect. Speaking on CNN, Fulton County District Attorney Paul Howard says he's considering criminal charges against the two officers, but is waiting on more evidence. One of the things that uh, we uh, must uh, attempt to finalize before we make a decision is to confirm the ballistics. Uh, we try to make sure that the projectiles in the body of Mr. Brooks, that we can expertly trace them to a firearm. Meanwhile, Tamika Miller wonders what the two officers 
may be thinking now. Do they sympathize with my family? Do they feel sorry for what they took in the way? That's what I want to know. You know? If they had the chance to do it again, would they do it the same way or would they do it totally different? Former Officer Wolf could have or should have done instead of shooting Brooks. Investigation. When they arrived to the scene, uh, they spent 20 minutes there. There seemed to, be, seemed to have been cordial conversation between Mr. Brooks and officers. And they allowed him to park his car in a parking slot, uh, which he did. And he appeared to cooperate. Officers had an opportunity at that point to either give him a ride home or to call him an Uber. Uh, oftentimes, arrest is not always necessary. In particular, in the light of where we are right now in this country, Aaron, uh, we have to be able to use discretion, and certainly was their discretion. But I think all of this could have been avoided once they investigated. They had a person that cooperated with them. He was a few blocks from his sister house. They could have dropped him off. He could have got an Uber. She could have came and got him. And sometimes you just extend courtesy to people, and everything doesn't always have to turn into an arrest. And I think that's just some of the things you're going to see are talking about police reform. We are now joined by Atlanta's Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms. Good morning, Madam Mayor. It's good to see you. Um, I watched your entire news conference yesterday. You're, this is very, very personal to you. Why do you feel so strongly about this? Hold on, it's for all the reasons we've been speaking about over the last couple of weeks with the killing of George Floyd. This is so personal to so many people of color in this country. And when I watch the video and the interaction with Rayshad Brooks in that drive-through, that could have been any one of us. It could have been any one of our kids or brothers. And in, in this case, it was, it was someone's father. And it it breaks my heart. And this interaction with, with these police officers was such almost a pleasant interaction and it did not have to end this way. And that's what's so frustrating. And quite frankly, um, it, 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 it leaves us asking so many questions because we do so many things in Atlanta we thought to get it right. And this went so terribly wrong. Well, you clearly want changes, and yesterday you put out some administrative orders. You want to change the way that police do business. You want to change things related to the use of force, related to police inter intervention. What kind of specific changes are you looking for, Mayor? So, ironically, we had just um, em embarked upon a review of all of our use of force policies, expecting a report within the next two weeks with final recommendations in 45 days. And then this happened on Friday. And so there are some things that we know immediately as we await those additional recommendations that needed to happen. We have to make sure that officers intervene in a situation where they see wrongdoing. That was the case with George Floyd, where we saw the officers not intervene. That's not a part of our policies. We have to objectively look at de-escalation. That's not very clear in our policies. It's shooting at moving vehicles and so many other things that is we're peeling back the layers of our standard operating procedures. Some of it's ambiguous and some of it is simply not laid out. And what I can say is that if this is a challenge that we are having in Atlanta, I assure you that there are agencies across this country, um, if they haven't already begun to do this work, then they probably need to today. Well, as you heard, uh, Mayor Bottoms, today, President Trump said he himself are, is going to put out some executive orders that have to do with police procedures. Did you think about waiting until he came out with his reforms before you came forward? We can't wait. We can't wait. We were waiting for two weeks for recommendations, and then Mr. Brooks was killed on Friday. So we don't have another hour to wait in Atlanta. And there will likely be even more announcements and more administrative orders from my administration for us to very quickly begin to address and in so many ways undo 
uh, the training that our officers have received over several years. You've made some changes already. The police chief, she stepped down. Erica Shields, she was the chief for three years, but on the force for 20 plus years. She remains on the force, but a lot of people held her up as the way police officers should act. She was with protesters. She was marching. And I guess the question is, should she have stepped down? Chief Shields and I have worked together for many years, going back to my time on city council. I have a great deal of respect and regard for her and for her leadership. But this is a marathon, not a sprint. And just as with any relay team, there are, there are times that you have to pass the baton on for someone else to continue the race. And Chief Shields said that she, with her deep and abiding love for our city, wanted to take a step back and allow someone else to lead us through this next phase. So she continues to be a part of our team and will certainly um, have a great deal of input as we make this transition into the next phase of what transformation of our police department looks like in Atlanta. And finally, Mayor, the DA said that by, I think by tomorrow, there may be some charges filed against the police officers. Some of the charges could range from murder, felony murder, involuntary manslaughter. You're an attorney, and yesterday, I think in your news conference, you called it murder. Uh, what, if any, charges do you think should be filed at this point? I'll leave that to the district attorney. He's an independently elected district attorney. Uh, we have several use of force cases uh, sitting in, in his office. And I just ask that with the same expediency and that he's looking at this case and, and the one a few weeks ago with the college students, that we take a look at all of these cases because we have to be able to offer our communities and these families some finality. And um, I'll, I'll, I'll defer to him and, and we'll await his announcement. Howard says the other officer, Devin Brosnan, faces three charges, including aggravated assaults for standing on Brooks' shoulder mm -hmm. after he was shot. Now, Ron Howard said Brosnan agreed to testify against his former partner. You know, that's what he said. However, today I spoke with one of uh, Brosnan's lawyers and she says that's just not true. Well, we are stunned that Devin is being charged at all. The attorney for officer Devin Bronson is disputing DA Paul Howard's claim that her client agreed to be the state's witness. That's not true. That agreement is not in place. He has made no such agreement and that was not discussed. She also says that her client suffered a concussion during the scuffle when he and Officer Rolf were trying to take Brooks into custody. She says that Brosnan hit his head on the ground and was disoriented. Devin Brosnan was on the ground, you know, as I said, when Mr. Brooks um, and Officer Rolf ran away. And when he got up, he was disoriented from his head injury. So it really took him, you know, time to process what was going on and what had happened. You can see on the video that he kind of starts to duck behind one of the cars when shots are fired. Garrett Rolf, the fired Atlanta police officer who fatally shot Richard Brooks in a Wendy's parking lot, now charged with 11 counts, including felony murder. His fellow officer, Devin Brosnan, also facing charges. With well, the DA giving both officers until 6 p.m. tomorrow to turn themselves in. The charges coming five days after Richard Brooks was shot and killed. Well, Ron and Sheriff Fulton County District Attorney Paul Howard says his office and investigators started looking into this case at 1.15 a.m. this past Saturday, and they worked this case around the clock ever since then. In total, they have reviewed eight different videos of the incident. They have interviewed and talked with 10 different witnesses. They also have preliminary autopsy and ballistic results from this incident. All of that, Howard says, led to his office filing charges today. First, here are the at the critical point of the shooting, uh, what the evidence shows that he was some 18 feet, three inches away, his back was turned. And, uh, and I believe a reasonable person would conclude that he was not an immediate threat at that time. I tweeted that it was not aware of today's press conference before it was conducted. The agency was not consulted on charges filed by the district attorney. Despite today's occurrence, the GBI will complete its mission of completing an impartial and thorough investigation of this incident, and we will submit the file once completed 
to the Fulton County District Attorney's Office. And you know, shortly after the press conference, D.A. Howard was met by protesters right outside the courthouse, demanding that Rolf and Brosnan be arrested immediately. Howard spoke to the group and addressed some of their questions before leaving. And I'm very hurt. I didn't imagine being there because I don't know what I would have done if I would have seen that for myself. But I felt everything that he felt just by hearing what he went through. And it hurt. It hurt really bad. Was this justice today? Not yet. We still don't have a definition for it. There's more heartache that families have to go through this and fight the public to try and get justice for a man that was shot in the back twice. It is my hope that justice will be served not only for the family of Mr. Brooks, but for the victims and families of the other use of force cases waiting to be resolved by the district attorney. So these are the charges that uh, we have had filed today, signed by one of our Superior Court judges. Uh, these are the 11 charges against Officer Roth. Uh, the first charge is felony murder. This is a uh, the death that is as a result of a underlying felony. And in this case, the underlying felony is aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. And the possible sentences for a felony murder conviction would be life, life without parole or the death penalty. Now, uh, he's also charged uh, by uh, in, in the arrest warrant with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. And uh, this is a, uh, a, 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 a count charging him for the shooting of uh, Mr. Brooks and the possible sentence for aggravated assault is one to 20 years. The uh, second or uh, the third aggravated assault account is for the shooting towards or in the direction of Mr. Melvin Evans. Mr. Evans was the person who was seated in the car. Did we have a picture of Mr. Oh. And uh, if you would point out this automobile is the place that Mr. Uh, Evans and his two companions were driving and a shot was fired. And I believe we've also got a photo of the shot that ended up in the vehicle. I think you got to stand it up. And so with count um, four uh, against uh, Miss Officer Roth, it charges him with aggravated assault for fi firing the weapon uh, in or in the direction of Danielle Killians, uh, who was in the passenger side of the front seat of the car. Uh, next slide. Uh, count five are, is an aggravated assault charge, and this was a charge for shooting towards or in the direction of Michael Perkins, Mr. Perkins was seated in the rear of this same vehicle uh, at that time. There's a charge for criminal damage for shooting into that vehicle. Also, uh, Officer Roth is charged with seven violations of office. Each one of those carries a one to five sentence. Uh, these are violations of his oath of office for the city of Atlanta, arresting Mr. Brooks for the DUI without immediately informing him of the arrest, uh, shooting a taser at Mr. Brooks while he was running of Atlanta's own LP, uh, thirdly, except when shooting a firearm at Mr. Brooks, and number four is the failure to t render timely medical aid. Those are the four violations of oath. The eighth is for kicking Mr. Brooks and the possible sentence Brooks is from one to 20 years and actually have a photograph of the
week he would go to the next one. And these are the charges for Officer Brosnan, and there are a total of three charges. And the first charge is for aggravated assault, and this is for standing or stepping on Mr. Brooks's shoulder. Um, and uh, the possible sentence for this crime is one to 20 years. And this is a photograph of Officer Brosnan, who you can see to the right. And at the time of the photograph, he is standing on the body of Mr. Brooks. And as I've indicated earlier in our conversations with Mr. Uh, with uh, uh, Brosnan, admitted that he stood on the body of Mr. Brooks. He said he believes that he was standing on Mr. Brooks' arm, uh, but that is the folks. Uh, we've also uh, charged him with uh, additionally two uh, violations of old. Uh, one is for standing on the shoulder. That is an unauthorized weaponless technique, which the city of Atlanta uh, prohibits and violation of oath was for the failure to render time uh, to, um, to uh, Mr. Brooks. Oh shit! What? Around 1.30 Saturday morning and rushed to the scene. Officer Bronson, uh, just up? talk with us just a tad. How was it in there? Atlanta police officer Devin Brosnan escorted out of the Rayshard Brooks. The Fulton County DA says fired officer Garrett Rolfe fired the fatal shots to Brooks's back. But Brosnan is accused of aggravated assault and not rendering aid fast enough. Brosnan's attorney says the charges are unreasonable. Crazy allegation that he didn't render aid fast enough. I mean, there's other police officers there. He's suffering from a concussion. He's got injuries to his legs and to his arm. Rolf is running back and getting a first aid kit. Attorney Don Samuel says his client is cooperating, but will not be a state's witness. The attorney also says the DA overplayed the allegation that Officer Brosnan stepped on Mr. Brooks' shoulders after the shooting. Attorney Samuel says Officer Brosnan fell and suffered a concussion and wasn't even sure about what was going on. Brooks is, is alive, he's talking, he's moving. Uh, and, and he is initially, for a matter of seconds, concerned about whether he has access to a weapon. He knows that he's got his taser. He puts his foot down on his arm just to make sure he can't grab a weapon. It's like six seconds.
and in Atlanta, which is being rocked by the shooting death of Rayshard Brooks at a Wendy's parking lot, protesters staged a so-called die-in by lying in the street. But in their own way, cops are also protesting. An unknown number angered over felony murder charges filed against the officer who shot Brooks in the back as he fled the scene are calling in sick with so-called blue flu. Mayor, what do you make of this? Well, you know, Chris, across the country, morale is down with police departments, and I think ours is down tenfold. Both police officers involved surrendered to authorities today. Garrett Rolfe is charged with felony murder. The other officer, Devin Brosnan, who is charged with aggravated assault, was released on $50,000 bail. President Trump appeared to sympathize with the cops in a call in to Sean Hannity. I hope he gets a fair shake because police have not been treated fairly in our country. They have not been treated fairly. We're also hearing from Rayshard Brooks in a just released interview he made five months ago about life after prison. If you do some things that's wrong, you pay your debts to society. And that's the bottom line. And, you know, I just feel like some of the system could, you know, look at us as individuals and not just do us as if we are animals. And then there's this. A Georgia cop breaks down in tears as she experiences a long, unexplained delay for an Egg McMuffin at a McDonald's. Right now I'm too nervous to take a meal from McDonald's because I can't see it being made. She said she feared it would be tampered with. But please, just give us a break. Please just give us a break. Some on social media ridiculed the officer, but she says she wanted to share her frustrations because people don't trust us. We are coming up on 6.30 p.m. on this Sunday, and the protesters remain active in southwest Atlanta. That's University Avenue outside the burned-out Wendy's where the shooting occurred Friday night around 10.30, 10.45. The protests have been ongoing since. City Avenue. Officer Brosnan responds. He knocks on the window several times. Nearly a minute later, Brooks responds. You're, you're, you're blocking traffic here. You were sleeping when I walked up here. What's up, man? You used to have a long day or something? What's up? The officer asks Brooks to pull over into a parking spot. Moments later, he falls asleep again. Brosnan returns and asks Brooks if he had been drinking. What well, no, you say one drink? What kind of drink was it? We just a little margarita. Brooks says he was waiting on his sister. Minutes later, DUI certified officer Rolf arrives. So you, you think that you're in Forest Park right now? I'm on Old Dixie Highway, Clayton County. Right. No, you're not. Well, Forest Park, Georgia. No. Jonesboro, Georgia. No. Try again. I have to. I mean, like I said, I'm on Old Dixie Highway. Nope. I'm not on Old Dixie Highway? No. Brooks then steps out of the car and fails a field sobriety test before agreeing blah, blah, to blah, a breathalyzer. Blah, 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 stop. Rolf then tells Brooks he is too drunk to be driving and attempts to take him into custody. Oh, All right, I think you've had too much to drink to be driving. So put your hands behind your back for me. Brooks then pulls away, struggling with officers as the body cameras fall to the ground. Stop fighting. Stop fighting. Stop fighting. You're going to get tased. Stop. You're going to get tased. You're going to get tased. Stop. You're gonna get tased. Stop. On, Stop. You're going to get tased. It's a wrong. Hey, get the Stop. Brooks grabs one of the officer's tasers and runs away. Officers fire three to four gunshots and then call for an ambulance.
Say the first question again. How did you feel when you saw it escalate? When you saw it go from... I, I called it. He'll tell you himself. I called it. Like, when I heard the officer stop, stop resisting and you know, it's nighttime. Like, we just pulled up. We went in the lot maybe three minutes before all this occurred. And I just heard all the tussling and stop resisting, stop fighting. I just said, this man finna kill this man out here. I ain't know what color he was or nothing. Like, we was the last car in line. And the situation occurred up there first before he started running toward our vehicle. And when I seen him running, I heard the uh, tasers or whatever. Then when I heard them shots, my first reaction was to duck. I was up under the seat, in the back seat, ducking. I ain't see nothing till we was off the lot, you know. I ain't see none of it. I was down. I was, you know, trying to duck away. So I don't know about the uh, other stuff, yeah. When the bullet hit the car, did you think you might have been shot? We didn't know the bullet hit the car till we left. I smelled gun smoke. I was back there smelling gun smoke. I don't know if it was the fire glass from the vehicle, but I smelled gun smoke while I was down the whole time. So, I mean, that whole situation just was terrible to me. Like, I ain't expect it. I promise that was the last thing I expected. Any were other questions? Were you the question? only two in the car? Nah, it was me, him, and his girl. His girl was in the front seat. I was in the back seat on the passenger side. This was well, actually the vehicle. The vehicle got shot on the side where I was at. I didn't know that till we got back to where we was going. Cause our whole purpose was down here for on some music stuff. Like this, why we come here to try to do music, you know. But we didn't even get to do that after this situation happened. It just everything went left the whole trip. Like, we weren't even in the city long. Did you see the officers try to render any aid to him? Uh, no, nah, I ain't even see that. I was down, like, after that first couple shots, that first shot, maybe the first shot I took. After that, I didn't see nothing else. I'm hearing screaming in the car from his girl. Then I heard him say, man, they, he dead. Because I guess he seen the body. I didn't see the body. I was still down. Like, I ain't know where the bullet come from or nothing. I ain't know no, I just My first reaction was just to duck. I didn't try to raise up, bring no camera phone out at the moment. I didn't do none of that because that wasn't my first reaction. My instinct just told me, look, get down. I don't get back up till everything ceased and we safe. You say you see this all the time in Memphis. Have you ever seen anybody killed before? Yes, ma'am. Not an officer killed a black man, but, I mean, murders happen like water in Memphis. Like, Memphis tough. And for us to come here where well, we're trying to conquer our dreams and, you know, try to get away from the negativity. Like, anybody in Memphis will tell you Atlanta is, we look up to Atlanta, we salute Atlanta. And for us to go through that, it just kind of, it made me feel some type of weight in that, situ in that timing. Like, I ain't expect, this the last thing I expect, man, I promise. So I'm sure you knew all about the George Floyd situation uh, while you were sitting in, in that drive through once you saw um, the officer shoot, uh, or at least you, you saw him and then you ducked. Um, what did you think about the force that he used? I just thought it wasn't necessary. If he had a taser, why not have a taser fight? You know, like, this might not have no armed weapon or nothing that's going to kill you or hurt you or harm you. I already shot the taser twice. Like, it wasn't nothing else left for the taser to do, really. So I, I feel like it was just, it was awful. Like, this whole situation just was awful. I ain't never seen this, witness this a day in my life. I, I'm 35 years old, I never seen this. And as a black man in America, with everything going on, how do you feel, do you feel safe here? Oh, yeah, I feel safe, you know, cause we was ducked off in the way. We just decided to leave our studio to go get some food. Will you feel safe if you encounter some in the future? Oh. Um, I ain't gonna, I, 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 I want to feel, I don't feel safe going back home because we got to travel through Alabama, we got to travel through Arkansas, Mississippi, Tennessee. These the biggest, you know, cities of it. So I'm kind of trampled back because we got to go back home, you know. You said you didn't record video on your cell phone to anybody? Before? I recorded the video after we left the light. I didn't, the instinct didn't tell me, oh, let me catch this. 
person shooting his man, like right there. I thought about that once we was off the lot and the police started pulling up. This one I pulled out my camera and just caught the last minute. I didn't catch the actual, cause there wasn't on my mind at the time. Yeah, anybody in the car? What? Yeah, nobody else, nobody, nobody caught video during the incident. Um, as you can imagine, their number one priority at that point was their own safety and their life. Um, they took video afterwards, and that video has been provided to the Georgia Bureau of Investigation. So Mike. if anybody wants to yeah. see that, they have to get go through them. Question, Mike. This is a scene that we've seen play out multiple times over the years, right? Something everybody's talking about now has gotten a lot of attention. As a black man, you said you never saw an officer, a white officer, shoot a black man before in person. As a black man, you've now seen that. What are your thoughts? How do you feel now? I mean, it's so normal today. It's just happening in different cities. It's just, uh, I mean, I'm, it's kind of, I don't know if they're trying to make us get used to it or what, but it's kind of like, it's so normal now. Like, it, it happens every day now in different cities. Like, this is the first time that I heard it happened in Atlanta, like me personally. But I done heard it in Houston. I done heard it in other states and stuff like that. I just didn't know I was going to come and witness it myself. Like, I wasn't even here for a brief moment. We just got, literally got here. So, that wasn't even in my mind. I just come to handle my business and go back to the house. And Do you think you ever, is there ever going to be a go back to normal for you? Are you forever changed? I feel like I am, sir. Like, this all me and he be talking about, like, off cameras. Like, I'm not, I, I didn't, all these kind, I didn't ask for it. Like, I'm not here for the, the exposure. I'm just here for just to get justice from the family and tell the truth of, of me being a witness. You know what I'm saying? I'm not here for all the extra stuff, like for real. Michael, can you expand upon the fact that you actually were more than a witness that night? You could have been a possible victim. At what point did you realize that the car had been hit? And what are your feelings knowing that being an innocent bystander just going to Wendy's that night for food, you could have been the victim of a police shooting? It, it, it's really, when, when I thought about it, my, see, my mother really made me think about it because she concerned about me being her. Like, I'm on my only child, so you can just imagine how she feels. Like, this is what really bothers me. Like, when I get tested and calls, so, uh, I'm praying for you and, like, I want you to be happy for me because I'm standing up trying to get justice. Now, when you start praying for me, that's when I get nervous. Because I'm like, why are you praying for me now? Like, I'm doing something right. Like, this is what I called. I was at work when I got called and had to take out two, three days to come get justice. And I didn't ask for that. Did you know the car had been hit while you were in the car? When did you realize? We realized that when we got back to the studio. And we, you know what I'm saying, everybody getting out. And he just bought that vehicle, like recently. He know how his vehicle looks. He's like, what's that? And when we went back to the uh, videos and stuff, they said he got hit two times. We heard three shots. So this what made us say the third shot in their car mine. What kind of car is it? It's a trailblazer, a white trailblazer. What was Take your reaction to yesterday's charges? Do you feel like the charges more appropriate? I feel like it's justice is justice. Like, if he killed a man that's running away from you, let me kill somebody right now running away from me. I'm getting the full strength. So if he don't get the full strength, he can at least get half of it. You know, he, he killed somebody. This somebody, somebody, he's somebody daddy, somebody husband, somebody love him. Like, regardless of how the officer felt about him or whatever, he was a man. He was a citizen somewhere. He wanted, he wanted her from my understanding. He was from somewhere else visiting her. Can you talk a little bit about your willingness to testify at trial? I would just tell you, we, we're going to follow um, his responsibility as a citizen, but we're going to allow the district attorney to tell us when and where it, or determine whether it's even necessary for him to testify at trial. Um, that's not something that we determine. We let the criminal process work itself out. I would take one more question. Uh, I you, have a clarifying question. Um, earlier you said you heard the cops shout, stop resisting. Um, and then did you say you called it as in, you know, that's what you thought was coming out? I mean, it's just what I felt like. 
that that was gonna happen because this was been happening lately. These cops have been killing people. So I'm like, okay, they wrestling with this man and the cops telling him stop fighting, stop resisting. This is my only, you know, I'm back there just really saying something, but I didn't know what was gonna happen. I'm like, they finna kill this. You know, I'm trying to laugh it off, but it actually happened. So that would really mess me up. I'm like, dang, I started ducking. I ain't see nothing else. They asked me what I see after the after the fact. I didn't see nothing but the float. That's it. Like I wasn't trying to get no footage, none of that, until I thought about it, and that was after we left the scene. Thank you. Thank you. Um. Attorney Okay. Yeah, they have a they have a uh, a rap group. I let um, Melvin. You want to come talk talk about what you do <laughs> and what brought you? <laughs> and and uh, hopefully they'll put me on a single with them. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, basically, we was down here for a video shoot with Pastor Troy. I know everybody for me for me with Pastor Troy. We had a video shoot. And um, that was basically why we came down here for the for a video shoot. He go by Mike Peasy, I go by Two Turn Jizzle. Mike Peasy? Yes, ma'am. Can you spell that for me? M I K E P E E Z Y. What did you guys get it down? Right. Yeah, I got one question with him since he came up. <laughs> it's been hard for him. It's been hard. He's um. He's been doing his best to give out information, uh, but this is difficult, um, and so it's emotional. But if you got anything to say, just go ahead and say it. I have a question for you. Can you please, since you were in the driver's seat, I'm just hoping you were looking, can you tell us what you saw after the shots? Did you see them kick him? Did you see someone standing on his shoulders? Or did you see anybody try to render any aid? What, what I saw was, I saw that they went in handcuffed. After that, we left. We was we was we was getting off the parking lot. They handcuffed him while he was on the ground. Yep. And the, you said they handcuffed Mr. Brooks. That's what I saw. I don't I don't know if they were, they was over there by him. When we when that when we pulled off the lot, they was over there by him. What was your instinct when you heard those gunshots in the driver's seat? Was it to leave, stay? What was what was thinking? <laughs> he said, uh, "Pull off the, you know, we we in the we in the we in the truck fussing at each other. No, it really wasn't no fussing, but he was like, um, man, let's go, man, man, pull off. I'm like, man, I'm not finna go nowhere with this man with this gun in his hand. And we ain't finna, I ain't finna go nowhere. Uh, they right there by us. We already nervous, shocked, all that, and I probably would have." Ran over them. They was that close. They probably would have thought, you know, that we was going to use the vehicle to, to, to hit them or something. But in five shots at us, I said, I ain't, we ain't going nowhere. Until I seen him put that gun up and go do what he do. We, we bagged up, away from around them, and just pulled out. Are you going to rap about this? <laughs> I don't, like, right now, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't even really want to talk about it right now. Like, I'm devastated. I'm Thanks everybody for your, your your coming today, and once again, um, we just send our prayers out to the Brooks family. Um, thank you. So we've just been listening to two witnesses who were um, in the Wendy's parking lot when Rayshard Brooks was shot. Um, one witness says that he was in his car. He had, he had uh, left to get some food. And um, 
found out afterwards when he sort of left the area that he had a bullet hole in his car. So they are just talking about how shocked they were, how um, how close, in fact, they came to possibly being caught in the, caught in the in the shooting themselves. Um, just to give you guys a little bit of an update, a second police officer associated with this incident has turned himself in. Officer Devin Bronson is facing a number of charges, including um, aggravated assault. The other officer, the officer that did the shooting, Garrett Rolf, uh, facing 11 different charges, including a murder charge. Um, he has already uh, turned himself in, but now Devin Bronson, we have learned from his attorney, um, has turned himself in as well. Uh, now we're going to pivot back over to New York, where Governor Andrew Cuomo is speaking. Let's uh, dip into that. That's right. So then we go back to the tracing function which is up and running, go trace the positives and see if they lead us to anything. They did. In central New York, Oswego, there is an apple manufacturing plant uh, where they take apples and they uh, process apples for sale. And there is a cluster of cases in that Apple manufacturing plant, about 34 positives in one plant. That's bad news, but it's also good news. That's the way this is supposed to work. You see an increase in the numbers. You trace the increase. Does it lead anywhere? Were they at the same party? Or are, they, are they at the same employer? Were they at the same protest? In Oswego, they were working in the same plant. Get to that plant, address it. But other than that, all the numbers have been good. New York City, you see by borough, we can look at the numbers, and it's all been good. Lowest number of hospitalizations since we started. Amen. Number of deaths ticked up a little bit, but the overall curve is the lowest we have seen. So it is all good news all across the board. Our New York City uh, reopening, the way we do this, the way we've done it in every region across the state, is we compile all the data. When we get near the end of that phase, we have state officials review it, and we then have global experts review that data to make sure there's nothing in the data that we're missing. And we don't look at just the top line data that I show you. Not that you are not public health experts also and statisticians and scientists and you would be able to see things in the data. I believe that about you, Andrew, not Zach. We have global experts who look at the data and uh, when they sign off, then I sign off. I do not sign off until they sign off. So they're reviewing the New York City data. It's supposed to go on Monday. They'll watch it Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They're studying it now. Uh, but all the indications are good. So I'm saying today uh, you'll get a final announcement tomorrow. But uh, I am saying businesses should plan on reopening. Uh, we just had a call this morning where we went over the New York City data and everybody is feeling good. So uh, my advice to New York City businesses, plan to reopen Monday on phase two. Now, phase two is phase